Today we're going to make mouth-watering Thai barbecue chicken paired with a refreshing papaya salad. Thai barbecue chicken is so popular in Thailand that it's basically become its own food group. Nobody can resist this herbaceous, spice-laden, sticky, sweet grilled chicken. I'm gonna show you my hacks to how to make this dish the easy way. Hey team, I'm Jet Tila and welcome to Ready Jet Cook, where I teach you how to make my favorite Asian dishes from pantry to plate. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss my next recipe. Let's get into the pantry. So for the marinade, I'm gonna need curry paste and curry powder. I call this Thai barbecue chicken 2.0 because in my first book I wrote it one way with a dry spice and then I was like, there's such an easier way to do this and that easy way means adding curry paste. So what is it? It's actually like 15 ingredients in one. It's basically all those herbs that we love in one amazing curry paste. You've got so many flavor profiles. You've got heat, you've got citrus, you've got all that herbaceousness that you love about Thai food right into there. So we're gonna extend that now and even add another layer of flavor, curry powder. So just like curry paste, curry powder is a super ingredient because you've got like turmeric, coriander, cumin, and so many more things in there. So now we're gonna extend it into a marinade, which means liquid. Now the liquid that I'm choosing is coconut milk for many reasons. One, uh, because of that natural coconut oil, fat is flavor team. And that means all that fat is gonna coat the chicken beautifully. It's gonna get down into the pores of the chicken and really coat well. So I'm gonna work this into a marinade. Of course, Thai food, hot, sour, salty, sweet, savory. I need the sweet in here because I have just about everything else. I wanna bump up the salt a little bit with some kosher salt. And lastly, I'm gonna up the garlic. There is garlic in that curry paste but I want even more because I think it really just boosts that flavor. I think garlic is just one of those kind of uh, what we call a force multiplier. I think it just makes everything more delicious. And you don't have to get very uh, particular in this cut. I'm just gonna give it a really clean mince. A note about curry paste. If you are cooking for friends or family that have shellfish allergies, do know that some curry paste contains shrimp and some don't. So just make sure to give a really quick eyeball on your curry paste uh, to make sure that all of our friends that might have shellfish allergies are okay. That's it team, that is Thai barbecue chicken marinade. But like a lot of things that I teach, don't just use it on Thai barbecue chicken. Use it on chicken wings, use it on steak, use it on anything you would actually put on a grill. It's a fantastic marinade. All right, speaking of chicken, let's go get that chicken. So as you can see, I have a whole chicken on a gel board and I've got a lot of options here. If you're like, bro, I don't like whole chickens, it scares me. Apply the same recipe to chicken wings, chicken thighs, chicken breasts. To simply split this chicken in half, whatever knife you're using, make sure to chalk up on that blade. Grab that blade with a pinch grip because you're going through some uh, bones here. So what I like to do is I'll lift the uh, chicken neck to know where the spine is. And I'm literally just gonna cut along the spine and break the spine up until I go through the back but not through the breast. I'm gonna turn the chicken over now, splay it out, and I'm gonna actually break that breastbone. I know where the line is to cut that breast in half. So I'm just gonna trace the line with the knife. Once I'm through, I'm gonna add a little more pressure, draw the knife through, and check it out. I've done it. All right, chicken is split in half. Let's make room for my next hack, which is using a gallon zip bag. It'll contain the marinade, it'll contain kind of all the chicken juices, and I'm just gonna slide both halves of the chicken in the bag. And if you're using chicken pieces, remember, same rules, all right, don't worry. So with the bag open, I'm just gonna pour the marinade in. I'm containing all the chicken juices in one area. I'm going to close the bag, but before I close it completely, I'm gonna push as much air out as possible. I'm gonna use the bowl again, but I can actually massage the marinade in thusly. And the lovely thing about the bag is if you're marinating this overnight, you can do a few hours on one side and then a few hours on the other side. But this is a really trick way to not make a mess and contain all the juices. 
So I'm gonna put this one in the fridge. I already have one marinating from yesterday. I'm gonna show you how to roast it off. Now this chicken is going to go into a 375 degree oven for about 45 minutes until it's cooked through. And check that out. That, that is a thing of beauty right there. Totally marinated on both sides. I'm making sure to use tongs now so I don't actually have to touch the chicken. I'm using the oven method to roast the bird. If you are a pellet grill champion or if you love grilling outdoors, make sure you're doing it on indirect heat for about 45 minutes until cooked through. This one is going into the oven for 45 minutes at 375. So while that chicken's roasting, I'm gonna show you how to make Thai papaya salad. That means we gotta spend a second on this guy. This is a Maridol papaya, a Mexican papaya, but it's not ripe. I think most people have eaten the ripe version, uh, but we use the unripe for salad quite often. Let me show you how to actually get the papaya shreds from this. We're just gonna start by peeling this papaya, and as you can see, there's a waxy skin, but before it gets any sugar, the flesh is very cucumber-like. I'm gonna show you two ways to do this. I'm gonna show you how my grandmother did it, and then I'm gonna show you how we do it in the restaurants when we have to do 100 or 200 orders. Here's the way my grandmother did it. The grandma style is taking a knife and cutting parallel lines into the papaya. This papaya actually has a seed pod about an inch in, so we're trying to go deep enough but not hit that seed pod. Now I'm gonna turn the knife perpendicular to the papaya and make my shreds. And when you're walking through like the night markets of Thailand, it's really fun to watch the moms, aunties, uncles uh, do it this way. So that's how my grandma did it. And again, it's really tough to mimic the beauty and the mouthfeel of that cut right there. Here's another option, uh, the pulling shredder. So pretty much it's a peeling motion and you're gonna be able to pull shreds just like that. Real, real simple. If you don't have the confidence in your knife skills, the pull shredder is really the easy way to go. But that's it. That's how to get papaya for the papaya salad. I made a ton of head that's ready to go right there. Uh, the rest of the knife work is very easy. Uh, cherry or grape tomatoes. I've got some uh, cherries here. These are simply just gonna be split in half and put back in the bowl. The next item is Chinese long beans. These are super fun. Uh, if you've never seen them, they're called uh, Chinese yard long beans. They have a pretty unique flavor profile. Unlike the Blue Lake green bean, uh, I think they're a lot more dense. They have a really nice kind of a, a spinachy taste. So the way you prep those is you don't want the little root ends. And then I'm just gonna simply cut this into two inch pieces. So it's time to get my old school Thai food processor. Yes. All right, so this is a wooden mortar and I'm just gonna start processing uh, the tougher ingredients. Dried shrimp, garlic, chilies, and I'm using two and that's gonna be pretty hot because these are Thai chilies and a few of the peanuts to start going. And I'm just gonna start breaking that down. And I'm not really overworking this. I just want them to break up a little bit and form like a rough paste. That's really all I'm going for. Just like that. Some of the long beans, some of the peanuts. And I'm using palm sugar. You could use regular sugar if you want, but palm sugar does crystallize. So I need to really start breaking that down. And when I'm coming into the mortar and pounding, you'll hear the word pok pok a lot in Thai cooking. This is that pok pok sound. So I'm actually coming in sideways to break down the ingredients so they don't jump out. And then I'm going straight down and then I'm actually gonna give it a stir. All right, now papaya and tomato. And I wanna really smush these tomatoes in there to kind of release their liquid. And now I'm gonna bring a spoon to the game to kind of turn over on itself. So the spoon is turning the ingredients, the mortar and pestle are pounding it. So I'm gonna add lime juice for acid, fish sauce, and we're just about done. This really is a fun way to do it. So if you don't have a cool wooden mortar that your grandma left you, it's okay to do this in a blender. Just build all the dressing ingredients and then toss them into the papaya 
and tomatoes. It's a very simple process. Secret ingredient time. I always add a little touch of MSG. If you don't have any issues with MSG, you really are going to notice the flavor pop of it. That's it, team. I mean, check that out. That is a beautiful papaya salad right there. If you can't find papaya for any reason, this is also a really good dressing for a slaw mix. So cabbage, carrots, you could even do like some green apples or something like that. Uh, but it's just another dressing to kind of put into your Jetila cookbook. All right, let's get that chicken. All righty, look at that. That's perfection. So like I was saying, I did this all the way through in the oven, but feel free to make this one of your grilling staple recipes uh, and, and cook it, you know, uh, off direct heat. Another thing you can do is uh, bake it off until like 160, hold it, and then when the friends are coming over on a grill day, finish it on the grill to get that beautiful color. There's a lot of options here. So how I like to break this down is just in kind of grabbable pieces. So the first thing I'm gonna do is separate out the leg and thigh. Boom. And this wing, which is my favorite piece, I always cut and hide for myself. And then the breast can really kind of become, uh, to me, three pieces. So I take the middle part off first. And then I take the breast, I'm gonna go to here. And the most important thing when cutting chicken uh, in the hole to keep it presentable is keep that knife moving. What you wanna do is not press and then tear the skin, kind of separate the skin first, just like that. And then you can find the joint and push down. Very nice. All right, let me plate this up. I've made like a nice little presentation platter and I'm just gonna start stacking that bird over here. I like to show off that perfect skin and I'm always looking for uh, some height to my plating so that leg can come up. That wing can also be a place where presentation matters there. And these little bits are chef's privilege. So I've got chicken, I've got my papaya salad. Papaya salad and Thai barbecue chicken always serve with sticky rice. And I mean Thai sticky rice. So Thai sticky rice is one of the few rice on earth that's truly steamed. It absorbs its water uh, during the soaking process and then it gets steamed in a basket and then it's presented at the table in one of these bamboo keepers. I'm gonna show you how to eat this like a pro. Uh, the way to use sticky rice is grab a piece of rice mold it into like a mini tortilla or a piece of naan because this is your starch. So you're gonna tear off a piece of chicken, laminate it right onto the rice. I'm gonna grab a piece of papaya salad. I'm gonna dip in sweet chili sauce and that's it right there. Mmm. Wow. That is the perfect meal. The rice kind of has a jasmine smell. That chicken is spicy, succulent. The papaya salad is acidic, it's sweet. And then you finish it off with just a little bit of sweet chili. This really is a meal that takes me back to Thailand. Well, there you have it, friends. A Thai barbecue chicken feast. We've thrown in the papaya salad there. I hope you make this at home. Make sure to subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Ready, Jet, Cook.